Hello everybody, this is Nikos Hoshmid and in this video I'm going to analyze my game against Grandmaster Matthias Blubaum from Germany and this game was played in the German Masters 2017 in the fifth round. So let's get right to it, shall we? By the way, for those of you who don't know, Matthias Blubaum is one of the strongest German players and actually right now competing in the World Cup. So very strong player and he's also just like Georg Meyer in case you have seen that game I had analyzed before a very big French expert and I didn't feel like going for French so I decided to go d4 which I pretty much never do as some of you might know and Matthias went knight of six bishop f4 so the London system I had prepared and here c5 and he had very specifically prepared this move d takes c5 which is rare but not without venom and i managed to surprise matthias here who spent a lot of time in the opening already and didn't find the best way to deal with this so let's see what matthias played he went knight c6 bishop b5 e6 and i'm just hanging on to this pawn b4 and I'm asking Black how he wants to get it back. a5, now c3, protecting the pawn. Bishop d7, once again threatening to take the pawn on b4. And once again, I defend against this threat by playing queen b3, defending the pawn. Now, knight e4. And I was very happy to see this move because this is quite a double edged move for Black to play. Um, I think in. In the video series by Jan Gustafsson on Chess24, where he looks at sidelines um, and looks at for the black perspective, Jan gives knight h5 as the best move. But still, the position remains rather, well, unclear, I would say. So, knight e4, and I decide to challenge this knight right away in f3. And I think here in a practical, practically the best move would be to go back, but no human does that, right? You don't play knight e4 to go back to the next move. So Matthias played g5, which is already a mistake. Black can go e5, but like I said, this is not something you want to try out without knowing anything about it. I had looked at this actually in quite some detail, and it's a huge mess and super dangerous for black. So we don't need to go into too much depth here you guys can check that out on your own if you want to so g5 now i take on c6 to open up the square on e5 for my bishop now f6 knight of six is possible of course but the bishop is just super strong e5 i have kept my extra pawn and i'm doing really well here so matthias played f6 but now i just go to d4 and yes, my bishop was trapped on d4, but I'm taking the knight on e4. By the way, the knight didn't have any squares here available. To him. So here I just take the knight on e4, and the position is pretty much already winning for white at this point. It's a huge mess though. I mean, as you can see, there are a lot of pawn takes possible. Matthias played bishop e6. If he was to take on d4, I could just take on d5. At least that's what I thought. Actually, I think if I remember correctly when I analyzed this, this wasn't too clear. I thought it was really good, but um, I think c takes d4 is even stronger. Um, and then if d takes e4, I can go b5, takes and knight c3, and hitting those two pawns and having two connected pass pawns in the center. So that would be even better, I think. Anyways, bishop e6. Matthias says, well, your bishop is trapped on d4 anyway, so I don't need to take it right now. Um, but on the end, at some point he needs to take knight e2. Just developing, queen d7, knight d2. And the point of knight d2 is that if 
But now black takes on e4, I can take back with the knight immediately and threaten the fork on f6. And if bishop e7, I can just retreat with my queen. So that's why I play knight d4, knight d2 before castling. And also there's another point which you'll see now after bishop g7. I can now go c4 and this is threatening too well. Finally move the bishop away from the center. So now black needs to take this bishop soon, otherwise it's going to move. Um, he took on c4 here. Well, if he takes on d4 first, that wouldn't be a good idea because I can take on d5, hit the bishop, takes back and now knight takes d4 and the pawn is pinned on d5 and I also threaten to take on e6 and then take on d5. So that's just game over. So d takes c4, but I just take back, knight takes. I don't mind the pin right now. Um, black cannot exploit it and I also have knight d6 as an idea. And now e takes d4. And here I took with the pawn, which looks so natural, right? You're repairing the pawn structure, have this nice center. But in fact, if I had only looked at this move for a little bit, I probably would have realized it's even stronger. It looks ugly, right? To keep those isolated e pawns in the center. But knight takes d4, the knight is aiming to f5, is hitting e6, and black has to give up the bishop here, which he certainly doesn't want to do but there are just no really good moves available. If uh, castle, then knight b6 is strong, hitting the knight on e6, as well as some other pieces in here. Um, this is just lost for, for black because he's already down some pawns and I'll take on b3 next, take some more on a5, so this is not good. And if bishop f7, well, for one, this, this square is available, but I can also play b5 here and make use of another tactic, which is here not taking back on b5 when the knight on c4 would be hanging, but first giving a check and then taking back next move. Or I think maybe I'll insert another check here if I want to. Uh, so here white is also up two, two pawns and with a winning position. So black would need to take on c4 and then take back. And obviously if I gain the bishop here already, and uh, Black has this huge hole as well, then a position is really nice for white. Even though still some work is required, of course. All right, so let's get back to the game I took with the e-pawn. Now castle, and here knight b6 once again was my idea. And now queen e7, actually a move I had missed. I was only looking at queen f7 for some reason when I thought that I could maybe even go d5. But after queen e7, d5 is not that strong because black, well, can probably just play bishop f7 and he has some counterplay here, even though the rook is hanging. This is the mess I didn't want to, want to have here, especially considering how my game against Georg went. So I just decided to move the queen, queen f3. Now rook a7, the rook is still under attack, so moves to a7. Here I played a big mistake and both Matisse and I weren't aware of that. Um, I played rook c1, which is an odd move anyway. Uh, I think I was just seeing ghosts and I want to, to protect this pawn on c5 once more. But I should just take on a5. And I think the ghosts that I was seeing were somehow connected to this. Rook takes a5, castle. And that for some reason I always thought there was some sacrifice, like f5 now, e5, and now bishop takes, but here I just have queen f2. Maybe this is what I missed, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm just a piece up and the knight is not trapped. But it's almost trapped. I guess this, those are the ghosts I was seeing. Like, Queen takes, king takes, rook b8, but I guess, I guess, well, I mean, this is kind of close, right? I have to play like rook b1, after rook a6, I have this knight d7 tactic, or knight d5, and uh, I have like an intermediate check on f6. Well, this is, I guess, what I had to see, but um, I didn't. And I played rook c1, 
And the point is, if now black takes on b4, I can go d5. I think that's quite strong. Well, actually, it, it isn't. Uh, I thought it was quite strong. <laughs> but it isn't because black has this very annoying intermediate move that Matthias and I both missed, I assume. Rook a3. Well, I missed it for sure, and I'm pretty sure Matthias missed it too, otherwise he would have played it. Uh, the point is, I cannot keep um, control of the g4 square, and then after queen f2 takes, takes, it is a problem. I'm still in the center of my king, and the black's actually winning here. So after a takes before, black's already clearly better. So I went from a winning position to a position where, <laughs> well, black has the advantage. That was kind of. Uh, well, not so cool when I looked at it afterwards, but it happens. And for me, fortunately, Matthias missed this moment. He took the pawn on a2. So now I got back on track. I took an a5. Actually, b5 is also possible. But I thought, okay, let's just take this pawn and castle. I've consolidated and I'm up a clear pawn, have a nice center. And black also has issues with his king and with his bishop. And uh, his pawn structure is rather, oh, uh, well, not solid, let's put it this way. So bishop f7, now I play these moves pretty quickly. They just come naturally. Knight g3, rook c1, planning knight f5, he goes queen a7. But not this move, it's <laughs> another move I'm not too proud of. I want rook e3 to, pre to stop rook a3, um, but black has other ways than to annoy me, so that wasn't good. I have two attractive options. Knight f5 is very natural, and then if rook a3, I can just retreat to d1. It's all good. The other one, which is more forcing, is to go e5. And the point is that after f takes e5, I can go queen takes c6, and um, my knights are coming in, and I've, of course, these possibly connected past pawns, uh, because black cannot take, because rook takes e8. And white is crushing pretty much. Not sure. Maybe I didn't really consider e5 for too long. Um, so I won rook e3, but now rook a1, which I realized after I played my move, is also kind of annoying. So now I won h3, which makes sense, give the king some space. Rook d8, knight f5, defending the pawn, takes, takes. Bishop f8, and now rook e1 back, queen a5, probably bishop g6 would be better, but the black position is, is tough anyway. Knight c4, well this is the problem of queen a5, that it allows me to improve the position of my knight. Of course black doesn't want to take this knight, I would take back with check, which is important, otherwise my rook would be hanging. And black really needs to keep his light squared bishop of course. So queen c3, now rook c1, queen b3, knight c6, and we're both fairly low on time here, which maybe also explains the quality of moves a little bit. At least that's my excuse. Um, bishop e6, and now queen f3 is, yeah, not a good move. It makes sense to take off the queens um, because the end game would favor me, but queen f3 does so under not so great circumstance. I should just play with like king h1. It's not not much um, black can do anyway, and I can think about ways to open up the position. Um, I mean, there are ideas like e5. There are these like knight h6 even. Um, actually, knight h6 might be a threat now, followed by queen takes f6. So. Those kind of ideas are in the air, and white is, is pretty much winning. So queen f3, and now black needs to take on f3 after queen b2. Um, his position just remains hopeless. But after queen takes f3, pawn takes rook a8, this will not be an easy task to convert because the black rook is so active, and black can always think about, well, taking on d6 maybe, taking on f5 maybe, and, um, well, more so taking on d6, and 
I have some weaknesses here I need to take care of. So this would have not been so easy, certainly. Okay, queen b2, now queen c3. Now those are better circumstances for white now if the queens come off. And well, black should still do it, but this position would be, uh, I think, more easily won. So here, knight g3, the queen is almost trapped, in fact. Uh, queen needs to go to a2. And once again, not much time on the clock. <laughs> uh, and I decide, okay, let's play it safe. Let's just trade queens. And that's perfectly fine. d5 would have won on the spot. I saw d5 with the idea to take away the b3 square. <laughs> what I didn't see, though, which is another important point. It opens up this diagonal, and if I take an f6, I can just just resign on the spot here, pretty much. So that would have been a little bit easier. All right. Well, doesn't really matter uh, in the end, fortunately. So rook a1, queens come off, and play knight to f5. Secure my two knights there, uh, and very nice outposts and rook a6 hitting the c6 pawn and now rook a7 just a little little technique first force the bishop to a worse square and then only go to seventh rank also not allowing the rook to activate because it needs to keep protecting the bishop now bishop takes f5 knight takes rook e8 and here play g4 could have made my life much easier with knight g3 what i didn't see it after rook d8 I can go knight to h5, which is very unpleasant for black. Threatening knight takes f6 and checkmate. So that would have been much easier. Matthias told me after knight g3, he would have been, he would have probably just resigned on the spot. Well, I went g4, securing my knight. And yes, the pawns are equal again, but of course you only have to look at the pieces to see that uh, my piece are much better placed and I can at some point win this weakness on c6 h5 king f3 check check king goes back rook e4 rook c7 going after the pawn if black now defends passively and he's almost in Tsukso in fact his only move is to move to king here and um, one way i'm pretty sure there are many ways would be to go knight d6 and then to pick up this pawn and white will win sooner or later but Matthias went active, which I think is, is the best choice for him to still create some practical problems. And he decides to, okay, let's see some more moves here, repeat moves to gain some more time on the clock. Uh, but then c6 must be the way to go, push the pawns, of course. And Matthias is going for this h3 pawn and wins the pawn. But of course, I have two connect pass pawns. So I just calculated. And I realized that I'll be in time and I played d6. The pawn is that after h3, d7, h2, black would queen would check, but I can play rook takes f8 here and that's it. If king takes a queen and checkmate in two moves, and if the king moves, then well, rook g8 would be like checkmate as well, but also I can go rook h8, and that's it. So, well, there's not much for black to do. I just go d7, d8 next. So Matthias decided to give her his bishop, but this is, of course, hopeless because I still have my pawn on c6. That's important. Otherwise, it would be a rather difficult technical task. Okay, king comes closer, push the pawn. No, and rook h8. Pawn is if black takes on c7, I can go here and then knight e6, picking up the rook. So king d7, but now still check. Knight e6, threatening to go rook h8 and winning. Rook h8, rook b8, and c8. So h3, I thought, okay, I can go rook h8 and so on, but why not just take this pawn? That's not. Let's play it simple, right? And I can still go rook h8 later. And here, Matthias resigned. 
So I was quite happy with this win, obviously. Um, but it has to be said that most of the win came from the opening preparation. And Matthias pretty much went for a line that that was the worst one I had looked at before the game because it just gives quite an overwhelming position after the opening. Um, what I wasn't so happy about, of course, were my a few mishaps, especially Rook C1, uh, completely re reversing the evaluation of the position. So, well, once again, uh, as we have seen in my game against Georg Meyer, it's not so easy to win a winning position and one has to stay focused and alert till the end. So that's, once again, one of my major takeaways. So those are two games, my game against Meyer, and feel free to check that out if you want to, I'll find a link in the description, and my game against Blue My Own to share with you from the German Masters, and to give you just a quick recap how the tournament went, I ended up on four out of seven, so plus one score. Uh, I drew my other games, and I'd won in round one against Rasmus Svane and I ended up on tight uh, third to fourth place together with Georg Meyer. So I was pretty, pretty satisfied with the tournament because it was a German elite in the tournament and um, I showed that I can very much um, be at par with them. Um, so it was a fairly successful tournament for me even though of course this this loss uh, earlier, I should say, uh, hurt a lot. Um, all right, let me know if you have any questions about this game and then I will see you shortly again in one of my other videos. Bye bye.